Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of my Positive Possibility podcast at Joyous Everyday Living. It's hosted by Patty Teal at hubforpodcasting.com. And I'm so delighted to be here today with none other than the famous real Yazi Yazi, who is also known <laughs> as my daughter, my brilliant and gorgeous daughter. And I'm so proud of her as her dad is of everything she's doing. She's really uh, spreading a remarkably positive world uh, view to many people around her age group. And uh, she's just sheds light wherever she goes in a really fun way. So I'm so thrilled to have her as our guest today. And Thanks, what Paul. she does, and there she is, Yazi, give us a little, hello. There she hello. is. Thanks and her pup is right with her, her right hand. Oh, right hand guy. So she's basically a lyricist, which means she's a beautiful, thoughtful writer. And she does conscious rap. And also, uh, it could be said alternative hip hop. And her positive possibilities are a lot around self empowerment, which we all need today in order to keep our center amidst all the chaos and all the changes that uh, go on. And her rap um, is often is mostly on her philosophy approach and theories of life that are so uplifting to many. So exciting news. She's got a video that's going to be released later today. It's called yeah. A Lot to Say Yay. It's okay, so excited. fun. And it's going to be on YouTube. So check it out at The Real Yazi, T-H-E-R-E-A-L-Y-A-Z-I, -A, -E -A, a lot to say. And um, later, I'll, I'll uh, at the end, I'll tell you how to find her in all the various places. But right now, today, she's going to talk about the why behind all her music why she does it, all the whys, which is such a fascinating question. So Yazi, welcome, and I'm so happy to have you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, I mean, the why is always the, the super important question to get to. I think, you know, we, I don't know if you heard of the golden circle, how we perceive it's what's happening, how it's happening, why it's happening. And a lot of times we get stuck on the what's happening and how it's happening without going to the root of the cause. And um, I think that that kind of is consistent with most things in life when it comes to like personal issues. So um, that's what rapping does for me because it it's a way for me to, when I write, it's, it's me kind of like breaking down my experience of existing, you know? So all of these different things that happen and processing it and being able to reflect on what what is going on in my personal experience and what I'm seeing elsewhere but it um the what my like long-term goals with it is about opening doors to a message um which is I think past our basic human needs you know shelter food water um are most of the the issues that I see kind of get boiled down to this point of how you perceive yourself and the self-love and self-actualization and realization and um you know how deep you you start exploring and growing through that because if you want to understand how everything else works in the world then it starts with you know how you're understanding yourself because we're all kind of one in the same with these things so when you don't have that then this gets really conflicting and difficult. Um, that was a huge thing that rapping and writing did for me was help me really build a relationship with myself. And I think a lot of people don't even realize that you can uh, open those doors to those types of questions. You know, it's not even a thought and it's everyone's personal responsibility to um, lead their lives and do that, put in the work for them. For, for that to give yourself what you need um, but it's hard to do it without the tools so the, what I'm doing with music is kind of like I want to open the doors for these types of topics for people to kind of self-explore and lead by example in in living those ways it also keeps me on track with you know we all have our triggers and our traumas and things and uh, it's about like how you want to respond to stuff and how you're perceiving so it helps me stay on track with um, keeping myself living in a line with the life that I want to. 
Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Excellent. Well, what have you been exploring lately? And, um, you know, a lot to say, tell me, tell us a little bit about what a lot to say is all about your, your new video. Yeah. So this one's, I'm, I'm very excited. It's a shot by my friend Carino produced by my other friend, Memo the plug. And I had it mixed and mastered by Legion X and Mascucci. So I got to have my whole little crew on here. Um, Well, this song is about, normally I have a lot of things to say. Normally I try to communicate well and express myself well, but if I get to a point where I go silent on you, then it's A, it's taken me like a lot to get there and that the silence holds weight a lot of times. And um, it's not just to give someone the silent treatment and be petty. It's also so I can process my response and not react like emotionally or you know mean something like that it's the the emotions come up first so it gives me a way to step back and look at it and process and then feel like okay is this worth this type of approach or should I do a different approach sometimes it's good to you gotta let situations air out you know I think that is a good, I just realized that yesterday when I really react to something, it's usually time. I mean, often it's, it's, it's fine. There is something that needs to be looked at, but if I don't take a few breaths and and chill out around it, I can, I can communicate in a way that maybe I wouldn't want to, if I hadn't just stepped back a little and been a little more thoughtful and went like, okay, this is a real situation. How do I want to approach it? So I actually get an outcome without creating a lot of damage. Um, You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, that that's wise really to do that as well. So, um, well, uh, you talk to a lot of people. I know a lot of times you yeah. offer them a lot of support and are there common threads that go on between people of, you know, you're, you have, you're basically in a certain age group, one that I might not have as much access to. And I'm just wondering if there's current threads of challenges or what people are working on or seeking or anything like that oh I don't know that it's really like restricted by age as much and I mean maybe it's harder when you're younger and you're not looking at the world and um, more of the understanding of like the spectrum that there's like good and bad and hard and easy and those types of things but I think most people just search for some sort of a purpose you know Mm -hmm. something that gives them fulfillment in life that gives them that drive or want to live whatever it may be whether it's like your career or your passion that you found or just like enjoying simple things about living but um I think without that that's a it's a big struggle because life is hard and there are hard things that we inevitably have to go through and um you know when you don't face those challenges and acknowledge it then the hard things become more devastating instead of building a relationship with them but um, those things like purpose um, give you driving forces to make it through. It makes you see like, you know, something off in the distance that's still worth fighting for. So I think, I don't know if that answers it, but. um, Well, if that's what, yeah, yeah, if that's what people are seeking, some sort of stable center or some sort of focus for their interior life that keeps them, you know, keeps them from falling in the water and not being able to, you know, to get, to get in the air. You know what the other part of that though is, is that I don't think it's just that wanting to find something and not having it. It's also having it and maybe not being able to fully like allow yourself Mm -hmm. to, to pursue it or be involved. There's all, all the different politics of life and, um, social things that we have that go on that tell you like don't do this or you can't do this or they don't understand this and that I think those parts become conflicting for people too instead of completely just living your life you know as as authentically as you can you get a lot of ties like trying to make you go other ways Uh, that was a big thing in my personal like that that was a huge game changer for me was deciding to 100% commit into pursuing what I'm doing with music that that changed everything how harder to 
Yeah. It, it's harder to be 99% committed than it is 100% committed because you're teetering, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's more fulfilling when you know you're giving something your all as well and giving your, your best shot instead of being like, oh, I wish I could have or I should have and now I can't, you know. Wow. Yes. That's an act of bravery, isn't it? And but yet there's nothing if you're going to really do this life right, you might as well do it with everything you've got, right? You're guaranteed one. And so, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm I'm very fortunate because um of my upbringing, you know, uh oh, with your being born with your Well, being born into like a really creative family, mom, your dancer, a belly dancer, a painter, a writer, dad's musician, you know, like performing arts has always been a place in my life of being surrounded by it. So it's like, I, I got, when it was time for me to find this, um, I had support and I also had an example of it, you yeah. know, like not a lot of people have that kind of example they can look up to as their, their, as a guiding light to be like, Oh yeah, you can follow your passion and pursue it and make a living off of it. And, you know, so I, I was fortunate in that because, you know, does the world need another rapper? I don't know, but here we are. <laughs> oh, yes, we need you. <laughs> we do. We do. Everyone's perspective is so valid. So yeah. Um, yeah. and what would what support would you offer people who are either looking for their purpose, but they they're maybe can't see it because, as you said, culturally, we've put so many blocks up to really believing we can be who we are and do what we love and um is there anything you want to say to people who haven't found it or afraid yeah. to find it or have found it and afraid to to uh, d delve in and uh anything you would like to say yeah i that? think that um you know you, you gotta be okay with where you're at on the path because that's where we're that's the only place that we're at and you know, being present and accepting that life has this flow of, of you're going to discover things when you discover them. You're going to learn your lessons when you learn them. You're going to find your passions when you find them. And, um, you know, you're in an okay spot. But the, I think the thing that always centers me out of hard places is finding gratitude. Mm. That, I think that's like a revolutionary act right up next to self-love. So finding things to be grateful for and this is what um, a little bit of what I talked about in my last Monday mouth words was about um, success seekers versus failure avoiders. And it's like, what are you tuned into when it comes to searching for things? It's, it's all your perspective, you know, the same opportunities and stuff. Things are around you all the time. There are opportunities around you all the time. But if you're choosing to only, you know, think that you can't have or there's not for you, or someone else has your place. It's like super limiting and, um, you know, do things that feed your soul. What, what makes you happy? What's fulfilling? I think a lot of those things um, go to like some sort of service. So you're a part of something that's bigger than you. How, mm -hmm. you know, but does that make sense? Or oh, like absolutely. Not? Absolutely. I, I, um, I just am, uh, you know, I'm doing this little, no, I'm not plugging myself up. I'm doing a little course on my book, which is Joyce Everyday Living. And the topic um, for this week was give, my chapter give, that it's so oh, cool. liberating. So yeah, we're so parallel. And I have to tell you another thing that's kind of parallel, but it was the liberating aspects of opening your heart by by generously uh, giving to others, whether it's just a smile in the supermarket or mm -hmm. something uh, that it expands you, it brings you out of your shell into that connection that we really all ultimately have. But interestingly enough, um, my, my girlfriend's uh, that I'm in a, a group with a, a kind of philosophical group were encouraging me, me to meditate more. So I did just start listening to the sound of water. And I just realized when I was seeing all my thoughts, like, Oh my God, I'm like, I'm irritating all the time. Almost everything I think is like, are you kidding me? Really? You're letting your mind go like that. And so I started this practice of, 
every time my mind was going, creating some kind of reality that was like, you know, sheer madness or whatever, I just went, <gasps> stop in, in the present, just be in the present moment and be grateful. And then all of a sudden, all that constriction and all that construct just like fall fell away and there I was in the vastness of the moment being grateful for what is and that that I just said oh my god what a practice that is and yeah. um, uh, because almost everything I think is just like you know trash <laughs> except for, except for the good <laughs> except for the good stuff where I actually I'm creating something maybe or you know you know what though what? that's so powerful and i think that um a big thing that we don't realize is that we also program our our brains we program our minds by these things and if we're not cognizant of our thoughts that we're actually having then you don't realize that that dictates your reality and it's like you have to retrain your brain give yeah. your you know give your brain new pathways to go and it can totally be done i think i mean i did it because i when i mean when i was younger and doing that self-discovery and going through a lot of my own hard things of kind of finding myself and the self-love i was not very nice to myself and i was very conflicted and when i wanted to change these habits i every time i had a negative thought or something that i didn't want to be a part of my reality like that I would catch it and then first it made me really aware of where my mindset was, which was in a very negative place. And then two, it, I caught it and I would change it immediately into something positive, you know, retract back from, from what it was. And it feels uncomfortable at first because you have wired your brain to go this way for so long with, you know, your, your, not just what you program, but also like, what's programmed around you and what you're told and taught. Mm -hmm. um, but you can totally retrain your brain. You can totally make, you know, your perspective is everything. It's wild how much perspective is everything. Um, and it's cool because you have a lot more power over influence of your mind, which means, you know, you can, you can become all those things that you see in successful people by practicing and doing it and like anything most things the more you do it the easier it gets you just gotta do it <laughs> you gotta you know that's the hardest part is starting it's like you just have to do it there's no i get to start this later next week it'll be a good timing or i should have started then like you are here you do it now like just you just gotta be about it and be patient with yourself when you mess up because that's that's you you don't get just the clean slate most of the time you it takes it takes diligence you're absolutely right and you're and and what you said about catching it right away before you keep thinking and thinking and thinking it gains a lot of momentum and then it becomes very real and i do know it's a reflective universe and those whatever it's so powerful it's so crazy the way whatever you're thinking just shows up and if you're you know even with people if you're approaching them in a uh the way you think about them in a a better light that that will come back and and situations can alter so it is it's a, it is extremely powerful um the your regular thought processes and yeah. i think that one guiding light for me um in all that is like it's just like hey i want to feel good and it's okay mm -hmm. to feel good it's like how you're supposed to feel and yeah. so you've got to be in control of feeling good like Oh, that's my prime value. I'm gonna. I, I like feeling good. Life is about that. So. Well, I think you don't realize how much you in. It's there's this influence of you self suffering, and it's yeah. like if you have the two. If I mean, I guess you could have the three. If you're gonna look positive, negative, or apathetic to a situation, you have these choices. What's gonna be the one that will benefit you more out of a, any situation, especially hard ones, because it's like if you go into a tough situation and you go panicky and freaked out you get tunnel vision in that and you don't see any other possibilities of potential outcomes that you can work around and like there are always ways to get to a different point you don't have to go a to b in a straight line and more often you don't because that's not how, you know life is is full of um peaks and valleys 
and flowy things and Indeed. flowing around rocks yeah. and creative process and mm-hmm. oh that doesn't work so let's try that and you all know. trial and error that's evolution though you know it's oh this didn't work now we got to do something this and you just keep doing it as you progress but it makes it very difficult and suffocating to be like oh i missed this this was it and now my day is ruined my life is ru-. you know it's like it's really not like that you have to come to an acceptance of letting things be what they are because that's just how life is and it's always changing so exactly it's always changing and it keeps flowing and i mean you could even really take it further and just say there's no such thing as mistakes there's just oh i made that choice wait a minute, I'd like to do it differently. And, uh, and that's how you create a piece of art. You know that and having and me having been a painter, I really, the minute I started getting into going like, oh, that looks good, or that looks awful, everything stopped, all the flow of creativity stopped, I had to just yeah. go like, hmm, how does that feel? Oh, let's alter that a little. Oh, that feels good. Oh, maybe not. You know, so you get used to it's not a mistake. It's a it's a process unfolding process yeah it's never ending so it's i mean gosh when it comes to art and stuff too mm-hmm. i think we we all can probably be our toughest critics you know mm-hmm. especially when you get to a point where you're not just doing it as a hobby or you're doing it to ex- expose yourself it's like you put yourself out there for critique and other people's opinions and that's another reason why it's so important to know why you're doing it and what it do, does for you and i mean I think advice dad gave me when I first started this adventure was about just like, no matter where it takes you, just enjoy what it is that you're doing. And that's, that's probably one of the big foundations of like, you know, putting myself out there for ridicule to be like, okay, look, like not everyone is going to like you and not everyone isn't. There are always going to be people that like you and people that don't. And that's just is how it is in life. And I mean, across the board with everything and that's fine I just can't hold weight to people's opinions that don't you know that that are going to be detrimental to me or to hinder what this does for me past you know what I'm trying to do on a bigger level because it still does everything that it does for me in the beginning which is you know feeds my creative soul and it makes helps me process my mind and be more balanced about life because like I said life is hard it's just you know how are you going to deal with it? But um, it's a it's a weird thing to expose it. And yeah. it's also trial and error. You know, there's tons of stuff I personally have made that I haven't put out and I, I never will. But it all is like sharpening your pencil or your sword to, to get to the thing that you're like, oh, I'm really happy that that was a part of the process to get to this thing that I really like. Hmm. So, yeah, that is so... Before we wind up, um, that's all so fascinating. And I'm wondering if, uh, besides loving your own journey, which is really the basis of everything, and that's what it's all about, is there something that you would like uh, some, I mean, in in the world, I mean, do you want to see people more self-expressed and more fearless or what would be the liberating aspect for others of what you do? Oh man, is that I think that, that no, you no, know, it's just, I mean, I want people to love themselves, you know, okay. I want to see a world where people treat themselves good, because I don't think that when you care about yourself, and you truly love yourself, that you do ill onto others, mm. you know, I would love to see a more peaceful, nurturing planet that, that goes to the why and tries to have understanding, you know, that, that would be a dream to you know see people treating themselves and each other better because all these other issues stem off i see them all stemmed off you know you're like oh i need the fast car to get this because this holds my value and now i'm driving a car that's putting out more pollution or i'm gonna eat this because i'm sad and i don't know why and now this is messing up you know it's it's bad for animals it's bad for the planet they everything has these like domino effects and when you're not really aware of why you're doing something then things get out of balance. And I mean, I think that the state of the world is really out of balance in a lot of areas and um, it's becoming more and more apparent. And I think that those are rooted into these these types of things where it's like, I'm not having respect for myself or other people's lives. And um, so I 
more understanding and loving world would be. And then of course, then creativity is spawned out of those types of things too. You know, when you have more confidence in your abilities, you're probably more willing to take those steps and live, live bolder lives and experience more things and be more innovative and do more things for mm -hmm. others. It's all a part, like this is why that's the root of it for me because I feel like it stems off onto so many different things that you know can can be healing for for our planet and people ah that's perfect that's beautiful beautifully put i thank you so much and boy do we all want you out there and we wish you out there and we want to hear you and love you and see you and thank you for your bravery as well yasmin and so i want everyone to know where you can find her she's on instagram as the real yazi Every uh, Monday, she has Monday Mouth Words also on Instagram. You can get her weekly insights. Um, her album called Twisted Tongue, which has got tons of incredible songs that you'll love. And she's got some wonderful videos too, which you can look for on YouTube under The Real Yazi. But her album is um, streaming on all platforms and you can find the coordination of everything she's doing at Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash The Real Yazi. And um, so follow her, check her out, keep keep going with the flow of all that creativity and compassion and you know let's just make a big happy impact all together and i really want to appreciate you and acknowledge you again yasmin yasi thank you and <laughs> that's good too and then one more thing that yeah. i do um is called the sd music room i've been running this networking group for the hip-hop community and everyone that's around it so for rappers, producers, videographers, singers, photographers. Um, I've been doing this for almost two years where I host meetings every first and third Monday out of the month in a way to support the community so you can build with like-minded people and stay inspired. So I think that when you are inspired is when you create. And so this is a place that people can um, come and grow together, work with each other, get feedback from each other, build. And um, that's that's something that um, I feel pretty passionate about and really grateful for. So that one too, the SD Music Room. Awesome, that is a great community service. And uh, I know it's affected a lot of people. So everyone, again, you can uh, reach this podcast on YouTube, episode 14, Joyous Everyday Living. Go to www hubforpodcasting.com, where Patty Teal hosts all my podcasts, my Positive Possibility podcasts. And I wish you all the best. And I look forward to seeing you next week with some more insightful guests. So thank you so much for being here. And Thanks, to you, Yazi. Yeah. <laughs>